okay, it might not seem like it, but me now and me six months ago to a year ago, completely different people. Like you might not think so, but the way I carried myself, my confidence, the way I did my makeup, the way I dressed, everything changed. And I'm gonna give you some of the mindset shifts that changed my life and changed the way I totally carried myself. Hello, I'm just Linda and welcome, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about mindset shifts and lessons I've learned from my healing journey, from just my past experiences. And I hope that these can help you or serve you in some type of way because these five mindset shifts really changed my perspective on life. Number one is don't hold any expectations. So I learned this when I was friends with this person, right? And I didn't hold any expectations for them. I didn't hold them to a high standard or put them on a pedestal, whatever, right? The later we got into our relationship, friendship, whatever, right? I started to put expectations on them. But then when I realized that they could never live up to my expectations, I was like, oh no, I'm gonna stop talking to this person. Like, it's not worth it, da 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 Like, all this stuff, right? And I dropped them in. <laughs> Didn't turn out that good, all right? Don't put anything on a pedestal. You are on the pedestal, okay? Do not put anything above you because you're the most important thing in your life. I want you to remember that, okay? I mean, let's be honest here. You can't say anything is perfect. This has to do with expectations and perfection, all right? You have flaws. Everybody else has flaws. So don't put dire expectations on someone else when you can't even match up to those expectations that you're putting on them. Don't put expectations on people that you wouldn't put on yourself. You can't put any type of item or goal on a pedestal because once you reach that goal, what's gonna happen next? I mean, you are probably gonna get sad and be like, oh, what am I gonna do after I get this thing? Like, you wanna buy your dream car. What are you gonna do after you buy your dream car? Are you gonna show it off? Are you gonna keep it in your garage? Are you gonna actually drive it around and use it? Like, what are you gonna do with it? Have you even thought that far? Exactly. Same thing with dream house, just dream anything. Anything you put at a high value, what are you gonna do afterwards? Cause if you don't have some sort of plan or some set or some other goal, then is it really worth it? Was that expectation really worth it? I want you to be completely honest with me. Set standards, obviously. Set a bare minimum. Just don't set expectations. Has everything in your life that has been fun, has the happiest moments in your life, have you expected them? No. Your dream relationship, like suddenly you find your dream boyfriend, you find the love of your life, you find your best friend, your soulmate. Did that happen because you expected it? No. That's exactly the point. The best things that have happened in your life, they came unexpectedly. You did not know that they were going to come into your life at that moment and at that time. That is what I'm talking about. Don't be a control freak. You can't control everything, so don't set expectations on everything because you won't be able to enjoy life. Number two is learn to be grateful and live in the moment. Gratitude is a lot for us, all right? It lets us see what's in front of our eyes and see the things that we have now and we should appreciate in the moment because we are privileged. Like if you can be grateful for anything, be grateful that you're alive. Be grateful that you have a house, you have food on the table, you have a bed, you have clothes, you have water and you have not an endless supply, but you have enough to survive. Be grateful for that. You are privileged because there are kids in third world countries that suffer to get food and water as a necessity every single day. Be grateful because you're in the position where you have everything they dream of. I want you to reflect on yourself and look at yourself in this moment and say, Yes, I'm grateful for having parents. I'm grateful for having clothes on my back. I'm grateful for being where I am now. See, people that have a lot of negative emotions or aren't grateful for what they have in the moment or and don't appreciate the things they have right now, they tend to forget everything around them and they only focus on their problems. They only focus on what's gonna happen in the future. They only focus on themselves. When you learn to be grateful and when you learn to appreciate the small things in life, that's when you start being happy again. That is when everything positive happens in your life. It's when you feel like, I am so abundant, everything is coming to me, I have everything I need already. It's like this, you have to know what you have right now. 
but being grateful for what we have right now that creates love okay gratefulness and love are two and two together okay they are always together and they always go together because when you appreciate the things in life you are also in love with life all right i'm sorry to break it to you if you're grateful for everything you have you're in love with life and to be grateful means to be humble and to be grounded and to know who you are okay i'm not saying be humble in the aspect where you put yourself down to other people's level no be grateful for the fact that you know who you are there's people in this world that don't even know what type of person they are because they conform to society's norms standards they conform to their peers standards they just conform to social influence you should be grateful that you haven't conformed to social influence and if you have at least you know now so you can fix it there's so much we can be grateful for and for us to be humble and true to ourselves and to live in the moment right now you have to focus on the present moment because the only thing that's real is what is directly in front of us the past doesn't exist anymore the future sure we can predict it or whatever right but it hasn't happened yet so it's not real of course you can plan out your goals for the future you can plan out what you want your life to be like but i want you to remember this it's not real what's real is the right now the moment right now whatever happened yesterday that's not real anymore whatever's gonna happen tomorrow that's not real yet so be appreciative of the moment right now because you're still alive right now there are people that have died in which they could live again to see what they could have done to see what type of life they could have lived you have to focus on the present because you do not know what you're gonna miss in the moment when you're just focused on the past or when you just focus in the future number three it's okay to have bad days you know yin and yang right it's darkness and light they need each other they contradict each other but they balance each other the whole point of yin and yang is that they balance each other it's the exact same way with good days and bad days if it weren't for the bad days you wouldn't feel grateful and you wouldn't feel as good on the good days because you would take the good days for granted if you didn't have the bad days so be grateful for those bad days because they make you appreciate the few good days you could have be grateful for the few bad days you have because at least you don't take for granted the good days like they're there for a reason they're there to push you they're there to challenge you not every day is going to be a bad day all right not every day is going to be a good day it's always going to be one or the other they balance each other out like light and dark like day and night there's always a night and there's always a day and we always go in a 24 hour cycle of night and day we need the good and the bad we need the positive and the negative because if you become numb to the feeling of negative emotions then you're not going to feel the positive emotions fully you're not going to appreciate the positive emotions you're not going to feel the love and the abundance if you don't feel the hurt and the sadness it goes both ways you can't have one without the other so you have to have the positive you have to have the positive and the negative you have to have the good days and the bad days you have to have yin and yang you have to have day and night if you don't have neither then you're just nothing like if you don't have negative emotions and you don't have positive emotions either then what are you doing like you can't feel anything whatsoever because you need that spectrum that spectrum is there because us humans are emotional creatures if you don't have that emotion then you're not necessarily human which for antisocial people because they're numb to positive emotions so they're also numb to some negative emotions as well but if you're down in the dumps and you have nothing else to lose take the risk do anything you can do anything if you don't have anything else to lose so do it what's holding you back number four everything works out in my favor this one's gonna be a little different, all right? I always think that the odds are in my favor and that ultimately, like the way the universe is set up, the way Buddha is setting things up for me, I think that the divine or the universe always has my best interests at heart. Even if I don't see it right now at this moment and I feel really hurt and I don't know why everything's going bad for me, I know that in the future, it would all be worth it. Cause it's like delayed gratification, right? where I have to wait for my reward. I have to play the long game and the waiting game and I can't go for anything short, short or anything that gives me instant gratification. I have to wait so I can have long-term success. I know divine intervention and all that. This is a little weird if you don't have any faith, but 
everything works out in my favor and everything works out in my best interest even if i can't see it right now because the universe is always on my side and no matter what choices i make i make choices that are in my best interest long term wise at least i always try to make choices that are long term wise in my best interest because I know that I can hate a decision I make right now at this moment, but I know future me will love it. Will absolutely love it, all right? And I want you to think like that too. You have to make sacrifices to get what you want. Now you don't want to make those sacrifices, but the return you get on it later is worth it. In the end, it's worth it. Like you sacrifice certain things for happiness. In the end, you're happy. You took out all the bad people from your life. You gave up that one job opportunity, but you gained a even better one. So you just have to play the waiting game because you know an opportunity will come that is better. And those choices are the ones where you can't go back on them. They're irreversible. Some choices you can go back through the door again and again and again and again. Some choices you only have that one time to pick and that choice can change the rest of your life forever and yes yes i know the universe lays paths for us and we pick and choose which path we go on because of the choices we make because we shape our future we shape our destiny nobody lays out a set in stone path for us to walk on i don't think the universe god buddha has that much control over us okay i think that we have so much control over ourselves that we can completely change our destiny with one decision one decision can change everything like if you're an addict and you make that one choice to never take drugs again you change your entire life if you're an alcoholic and you decide you know what i can't do this anymore i have to change i have to change for the people i love and you never drink alcohol again that's a decision that changes the rest of your life this is my last one and this one affected me the most, I'm not gonna lie. Number five, why should I let fear hold me back from doing the things that I love? Why should I let fear hold me back? I'm still working on this, obviously. I still have fears. I still get anxious when I go out and like talk to random people. I still get anxious when I do public speaking and all that, because I'm not naturally an outgoing person. Naturally speaking, I'm an introvert, like, <laughs> I don't like talking to random people. I don't like going up to strangers, basically. But I want to start networking. I want to start making more friends. But the reason why I do certain things that I want, like, let's say this, I want to become an influencer. Like, I want that life, right? Because I love making content. Like, it's one of my favorite things ever, okay? But I don't do it because, oh, what if people find that I'm trying to become an influencer? They'll make fun of me. But, oh, what if people this? Oh, what if I get judged? Oh, I'm scared to put myself out there. I'm scared to be uncomfortable. Why would I put myself in an uncomfortable situation? You should strive to go into an uncomfortable situation because that is when you grow. And growing is not comfortable. Nobody really wants to grow and become like a better person, but the end result is always good. See, people grow and people are constantly learning and constantly learning isn't really the best experience because when you're learning constantly then you constantly have problems that you're solving you're constantly going out and venturing out to learn other things to learn certain things it's uncomfortable that's the whole point and you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable you have to put yourself out there you have to do things that you wouldn't normally do but why does other people's opinion of you stop you from doing that because they don't dictate your life they can't control you. The only person that controls you is you. Like, why should I let other people control me and use fear of all things to control me? So, so what if they talk about me? So what if they judge me? That's them. That's their problem. They're probably jealous of me that I can make this first step. And when I'm successful, they're going to be like, but oh, can I be your friend? Da, 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 da. And they're going to be so jealous of me. And they're, gonna, they're not even going to be jealous of me. They're going to be envious of me. And that is the end of today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, all that. Stay tuned in for more. Bye-bye.